Good morning, guys and girls. It is February 5th, Super Bowl Sunday. And I wanted to check in with you guys. I haven't done a vlog in a long time. It's been months and I'm gonna start doing them again. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about what my plans are over the next couple of months with um, my nutrition and my training. And I'm actually on my way to the gym now to test my body composition. So I'm fasted. I woke up about an hour ago. Um, I haven't had anything to eat or drink, no water, no coffee. Um, and I'm going to get on the InBody, which is our bioimpedance um, body composition test machine. And I'm gonna figure out how much uh, body fat I currently have lean muscle mass, I'm going to figure out my basal metabolic rate, um, and then I'm going to use that information to formulate my new macro goals based on me wanting to get really strong and put on a little bit of muscle mass. Um, and I've never actually, come to think of it, eaten intentionally at a surplus. So. You know, I'm gonna use my BMR to figure out what my baseline calories are, basically the amount of calories I consume just to stay as is. So if I want to see a change in my body, we have to deviate from that number, right? We either have to be at a surplus to add mass, or we have to be at a deficit to lose mass, hopefully fat mass. Um, so I'm going to be eating to intentionally gain some muscle mass. Um, and I've never done that before. I've always eaten to support my performance, um, you know, to minimize the amount of body fat on my body, but I've never really eaten at a, a surplus to intentionally see how strong I can get. Um, so this is gonna be very different for me. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the experience as far as being able to relate with my clients a little better because Oftentimes, the people that I work with are under eating, and so a lot of the times we are working towards increasing their calorie intake to kind of get their metabolism moving again so they can lose body fat. And I know for a lot of people that's a really hard concept to wrap their heads around. You know, they want to lose body fat, and I'm trying to get them to eat more, and that's a whole other subject. But basically, this will be a good way for me to relate to my clients. I'm going to be getting myself to eat over the course of a couple weeks. Um, it's not gonna be what I'm used to eating, so I'll have to adapt to that. Um, but I will adapt over the next couple weeks. Um, I'll slowly increase my intake, and I'll start to become accustomed to eating that much food. <sighs> my phone's not mounted, so it's like sliding all over the place. Um, but anyhow, so I'm on my way to the gym right now. Fasted, no liquids, no food. We're gonna see where I am. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm going to come up with my numbers based on my test results. All right, so I have my um, body composition test. I know where I stand now. Um, I tested my body weight, my skeletal muscle mass or lean muscle mass, and I also know what my body fat percentage is. Um, and the cool thing about using the InBody is it also gives me my basal metabolic rate. So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm going to use that number there to determine how many calories I need to eat to um, at least start to be at a surplus and what those calories break down into as far as a macro ratio. Um, so I tested at 10.5% body fat and 160.1 pounds. And then of that 160.1 pounds, um, I have 82 pounds of that is muscle mass alone. Um, and total lean body mass, which includes bones and, and other things, is 143 pounds. So 
the lean body mass is what actually dictates what your basal metabolic rate is. So that's why anytime you have a change to your muscle mass, if you lose or add muscle mass, your basal metabolic rate will change. So we always want to try to preserve as much muscle as possible, especially when you're trying to lose body fat because that'll keep your metabolism up. So if you cut too many calories at once, if you add in too much conditioning and cardio and exercise, and you get to a point where you're at too large of a deficit, that's where you'll start to see a loss in muscle mass and the basal metabolic rate and your metabolism goes down. I'm just gonna show you a quick math equation. So, okay, so my basal metabolic rate is 1775, and your basal metabolic rate is just minimum amount of calories, just a function. So that just accounts for having enough food to support involuntary functions like breathing, pumping your blood, um, you know, brain activity, things like that. So I have to then determine what my activity multiplier is to figure out what my baseline calories or my TDEE is. So I multiply 1775, which is my BMR, and I'm gonna be exercising anywhere from four to five, maybe six hours a week. So I'm going to give myself a moderate activity level, which is 1.5 for the multiplier. So I'll do 1775 times 1.5. Okay, so let's figure out what that is. And this is just to figure out baseline. Okay, so that's, let's see. 2662 and I know right off the bat this is more than what I'm eating right now so I'm looks like I've been operating at a deficit already which is not good uh, but that's how that's what happens when most people don't track um, even me if I don't track if I don't pay attention to what I'm eating I can easily under eat so it just goes back to really being mindful and finding a method um, how to quantify what you're eating. So for me, the food scale works really well. I don't mind it, I like it, it just helps me. Okay, so 2662 is baseline, also known as your total daily expenditure. So technically, theoretically, if I were to eat 2,662 calories, my body would stay the same, assuming I'm exercising that four, five, six times a week. Um, so I know I'm probably eating more around 2,200 calories a day, maybe 2,300. So for now, I'm not gonna add any more calories to that 2,662. Eventually I will, but I think I'm gonna aim for that for the first week or so. And then I'll see how my body reacts. I'll retest myself. I'll see what my body composition is doing. I wanna make sure that, I don't mind gaining a little bit of body fat. That's not my concern right now. I just wanna make sure that I'm not gaining an excessive amount of body fat. Yes, I wanna get strong and I wanna put on some lean mass, but um, not so much to where I don't care about my body composition. So I still wanna stay lean and healthy. So that's really important to me. So I'm gonna start with 2662. That's for my calories. So let's break down from macros. Um, just as a rule of thumb, an easy starting point. I mean, you can be anywhere between 0.8 to two um, times your body weight. So for me, I'm just gonna go with one gram um, per pound of body weight. So one times 160 is 160 grams of protein. And then I'm gonna solve for fat second and then the rest will be left to carbohydrates. So I like to start at about 35% um, fats. So I'm gonna multiply 2662 for the rest of my calorie goal times 35%, and that'll tell me how many calories are going to fat. Let's just do that real quick. Let's see. Okay, so 2662 times 0.5. Okay. That's 900. Hey, buddy. That's 931 calories going to fat. So in order to determine how many grams of fat that is, I have to divide by nine because there are nine calories per gram of fat. So 931 divided by nine, that'll give me 103 grams of fat. 103 grams of fat. And so the remaining calories, after I subtract 160 grams of protein, 100 or 103 grams of fat is left to carbohydrates. So I'll add up one more. So 160 times four equals 640 of my calories are going to protein. 1095 out of my 2662 
is left to carbohydrates. So determine how many grams of carbs I need to then divide 1,095 by four, because there are four calories for every gram of carbohydrates. So divide by four, that puts me at 273.75, so I'll just round up. 274 grams of carbs every day. That is a lot for me. Um, so this is definitely gonna be very experimental. That's a lot of carbs for me. I'm gonna aim to hit 160 grams of protein every day, 270 grams or 74 grams of carbs every day, and 103 grams of fat every day. All right, so now that I know my macros, I need to plan out my day because if your plan is to simply log your food and hope that you hit your numbers, it's not gonna happen, especially when you know you're having to eat more than you're used to. Um, one, you have to ensure that you're getting a steady flow of protein throughout the day, that you're not um, going without proteins any certain meal. Uh, that's definitely gonna be the focus when you're trying to change your body composition. And two, you wanna make sure that you're setting yourself to have a really good dinner at the end of the night. It's okay if not every macro and calorie is allotted for, but I like to at least try to map out like 70, 80% of my day to where I know I have a little flexibility at night for dinner, but I'm leaving myself enough protein, carbs, and fats to create um, a real practical meal. So for example, sometimes if you're winging it and you're just kind of like tracking things as you go, you may end up with, let's say 300 calories at the end of the night, but you may have, you know, eaten up all of your carbohydrates. You may have a little bit of protein left and a lot of fat. So you have to somehow come up with this weird meal to fit whatever's left in your macros. So in order to avoid that, you just have to map out your day. So I figure for myself, I'm probably going to have to eat at least six times in a day. And, um, one of those meals will be a post-workout shake. So I like to start there. So to keep things simple, I'm just gonna try to divide things up. What I'm gonna first knock out is my post-workout shake, and then I'll divide the remaining calories and macronutrients by five, because I'll have five additional meals outside of that post-workout shake. Um, and the reason why I like to start with my post-workout shake is because there aren't any fats in there. So I figure out, you know, a scoop of protein plus about 40 grams of dextrose, which is what I usually do for my post-workout shake. I'll then um, deduct that from my total macros and then whatever's left over, I'll just divide up by five. And so, you know, your meals won't always be that square, that perfect, they don't have to be. At the end of the day, it's really about one, getting in the right amount of calories so you're not going way over, way under, and two, staying within your macros. Um, I'd say for pretty consistent adherence, staying within 10 to 15 grams of macros back and forth, kind of swapping some out would be um, pretty compliant. So, all right, so I'll just call you know my meal three in the middle of the day my post-workout shake. So. I know that my post-workout shake is a scoop of protein, so I'll just look it up on my fitness pal. I think it's like 26 grams of protein, or at least the protein I've been doing lately. So let's see. Post-workout shake. I'm gonna do one scoop protein plus dextrose. So for me, that comes out to be, let's see. And this is what you guys have to do is you'll have to play around in my fitness pal or my macros, whatever database you're using, entering in meals, entering in certain um, resources of those macronutrients and playing around with the quantities to figure out what works. And it's just, it's trial and error. Like I like to go off of my list of macros. Um, it has a pretty comprehensive list of like good protein sources, good fat sources, good carbohydrate sources, and then what like a half a cup or a cup or you know four ounces of this or what you know how many macros are in each of those servings. So kind of give me like a baseline to put together, but I won't really know until I add it all up and put it into my fitness pal how it works out. So I like to do that ahead of time. It's really tedious, but you do it for the week and you have it done. You don't have to do it as you go. So for me, a scoop of my protein ends up being 25 grams of protein and one gram of carb. And then my dextrose powder, I do 40 grams of carbs there. So my post-workout shake 
comes out to 270 calories. And of that, yeah. I'm using 25 grams of protein and 41 grams of carbs. Okay. So for me, I know that I have five other meals throughout the day that I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do now is I know my post-workout shake accounts for 25 of my protein grams. So I'll just do um, 160 minus 25, and then I'll divide that by five because I have five more meals to eat throughout the day. So 160 minus 25 equals 135, okay? 135 divided by five is 27 grams of protein. Again, this is just kind of average. This is a guideline to use. So on my sheet, which I'll show you, I'm gonna write out on my other five meals of the day, I need to get 27 grams of protein at each of those meals, or approximately. Okay, again, that's just a guideline. All right, next, I'll tackle the carbohydrates. So. I know right out the gate, just for my post-workout shake alone, I'm gonna be getting 41 grams of carbs there. So I'll subtract from my 274, oh my God, 41 grams of carbs. That leaves me with 233, so I'll divide that by five. 46.6 grams. I'm probably, that's a lot of, that's a lot of carbs to eat at each sitting. Um, I know that's gonna be too much for me to eat, so what I'm gonna do, is add an additional 20 grams of carbs to my post-workout shake. So it's gonna be 60 grams of carbohydrates in my post-workout shake. So that just means an extra tablespoon, I think. I'd have to check the label. But this is just gonna be, I know, easier for me to get in my carbs. It's gonna be too hard for me to eat 45 grams of carbs each meal. So I'll do 274 minus 60 because that's what's gonna be in my post-workout shake. That leaves me with 214, it's a little better. Five by five, 40, <laughs> all right, 42.8 grams. So I'm just gonna round, I'll just say 42. Remember, it's just a guideline, it's not gonna be this perfect, but this will help you map out what your meal should look like. Oh my God, that's so many carbs. And then fats, so I don't have any fats in my post-workout shake, so I simply divide all of my fats by the five additional meals I'll have. So 103 divided by five, 20.6. Okay, so I'll just round. Okay, 20 grams of fat. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite this for you guys and then I'm gonna show you. And I just walked you guys through starting with my post-workout shake. You know, I subtract that from my macronutrients for the day, and then I just divide it by five because I have five additional meals I'm gonna be consuming. But again, overall, it's just about getting in what you need to eat. It doesn't matter how you space it out, how many meals you have, what your meal frequency is. If you can eat this in three meals, then go ahead, but most people can't, so I'll try it in six. I'll see how it feels. Hopefully, I can um, make it happen. If not, then I'll divide it by seven. Um, but again, it doesn't matter how perfect or round or square all these meals are. Um, they don't have to be this perfect. You don't have to have 27 grams of protein every single meal. It doesn't have to be divided by five or by six evenly. It just matters, one, that you're getting protein all throughout the day, super important, and two, that you're not going way over or way under on your calories. That's the most important thing. Um, you can be as strict or as lenient as you want to be. Obviously, the more strict, more compliant you are, the better results that you'll get. Um, but for now, it's just about increasing my eating. So now I'm gonna map out kind of an idea of what those meals are gonna look like based on me needing 27 grams of protein, 42 grams of carbs, and 20 grams of fat. So I'm gonna do this by referring to my list of macro sources. So I'm gonna look and see, all right, if I were to eat chicken, how many ounces of chicken is that gonna be at each meal? Or how many ounces of a particular cut of beef will that be? Or how many ounces of shrimp at that particular meal? If I'm gonna eat rice or potatoes or vegetables or fruit, you know, what does 42 grams look like of carbohydrates using those various sources? And then um, the fats too. Now remember, each food, has multiple um, macronutrients in it. So yes, eggs can be a great source of fat, but they also have plenty of protein or vice versa. You know, avocados can be a great source of fat, but they also have carbohydrates. So you have to account for all the macronutrients present in the food, which is why it's important to track everything. So 
All right, so I spent some time kind of going over some hypothetical meal ideas. Again, I just refer to my list of um, macro sources. So I'm gonna show you guys here. You really can't see, but so again, I kind of divide everything out by however many meals I wanna try to get. And then I'm thinking, all right, on average, I need 27 grams of protein per meal. So I look at the protein sources and I look to see, okay, how much chicken would that be? How much beef would that be? How many eggs and so forth? And I plot out what I like to eat at that time of day. And then I see based on what the source is, whether it's chicken or beef or pork, whatever it is, how much of that equates to the 27 grams or whatever my target um, macro allotment is for that meal. Um, but it's doable, you just have to, see I opened a drink because I started getting stressed out. But um, you just have to play around with it. So let me show you. Okay. So, like I said, I started out with like a very square guideline. Okay, this is how we started. On average, I was like 27, 27, 27. Okay, but you know, then you put it to practice, real life, and not every meal is gonna be that square. So I started adding things up. Again, it's a little messy, I know. But for breakfast, I figured out that I am going to get roughly 28 grams of protein, 37 grams of carbs, 18 grams of fat. And that comes from some Southwest shredded potatoes, three eggs, and one chicken sausage. Then I moved down to meal two, and I have 22 grams of protein, 36 grams of carbs, 15 grams of fat. That comes from three ounces of chicken, three quarter cup of jasmine rice, and a tablespoon of olive oil, which I get from a chimichurri sauce that I make to put on top. And then I've got my post-workout shake, which we already know is a scoop of protein plus 60 grams of dextrose. And then I have my um, meal, like my real food meal after workout which is a burrito bowl. I'm gonna do three ounces of chicken, three quarter cup of jasmine rice, and two of those mini um, 100 calorie packs of guacamole. So that equates to 24 grams of protein, 46 grams of carbs, 19 grams of fat. And then um, in the middle of the day, I don't necessarily have the time to sit and eat, so I make a meal replacement shake to bring with me. So I make this ahead of time. I figured out how much I needed each ingredient to hit my macro goal. So for me, it's a scoop of protein, 118 grams of banana, 72 grams of strawberries, two tablespoons of almond butter, and one cup of cashew milk. So um, I also throw in some greens in there. And I didn't write it down because I didn't account for it, but a lot of these meals, like breakfast, I'm gonna be throwing in some greens. Um, I'll probably throw in some vegetables in the other meal too, really green leafy stuff that doesn't necessarily have any macronutrients or calories. I don't care if it puts me over or anything like that. It's all good stuff. You have to be aware of your quality of food and getting in those micronutrients from vegetables, super important. Um, so anyways, back to the burrito bowl. Three ounces of chicken, three quarter cup of rice, too many cups of guacamole. That'll equate to that meal right there. And so what I'm doing, um, and oh yeah, and then the meal replacement shake. Um, so like I said, I don't like to be super rigid at night. I think for most people, they like to be able to play around with their dinner, but you have to make sure that you're allotting a practical amount of each macronutrient to make a meal for yourself. So if you're just kind of winging it throughout the day, you can easily end up with some weird macro allotment like two grams of protein, you know, 15 grams of carbs and 70 grams of fat. You can't do that. You can't make a meal out of that. I mean, you can, but it would be pretty gross. So um, I make sure that I'm adding all this up and then I'm subtracting it from my target goals so that I have a practical amount remaining. So after my five meals throughout the day, this is what I have left over to play around with. 26 grams of protein, 53 grams of carbs, 30 uh, grams of fat. That's still a lot of food for me, so more than likely I will split this into like two small meals or a dinner, a smaller dinner, and then like a dessert or some small snack before I go to bed. That probably won't be one big meal because it's a lot of carbs and a lot of fat. But it just gives me a little flexibility to come up with something that I enjoy, that I like, that's also within my macro. So. All right, so that concludes my video on how I'm calculating my macros for mass gaining and strength development. You cannot eat like a little baby bird if you're trying to get strong. 
And that's one of the biggest mistakes people make. They put a lot of work into the gym. They up their training volume. They try to lift heavier. They try to, you know, train more often and they increase their activity, but they don't eat to support it. You can't grow and develop muscle out of nothing. So make sure that when you are focusing on getting stronger, developing mass, that you eat accordingly. So that means you have to prepare your food. You have to plan it out. Um, so that's it for now. I'll be showing you guys throughout the week what those meals look like. I will catch you guys later. Please subscribe and um, let me know if you guys have any questions or feedback. I'd love to hear from you and you know, if there's any questions about any nutrition or training aspect of things, please post it. I'll get back to you. Let me know what you guys wanna see.